tarda. No sé si veniu de la sessió anterior, però si algú necessita anar al lavabo o fer un piti, que ens avisi, ni no l'esperarem, d'acord? No, de veritat, hi ha algú que necessiti anar al lavabo i que necessiti dos minuts? No? D'acord, doncs tirarem. Em passaré a l'anglès, el que necessiti o la que necessiti traducció, sabeu que teniu la disponibilitat de la traducció simultània, i per tant tota la xerrada serà en anglès perquè no parlo danès, però bé, en tot cas, suposo que tots ho seguireu. I was just saying that if anyone needs to go to the restroom or just smoke, that we are not going to wait for them. So, and that we are going to talk in English because the Maidanese is not so good. So, well, first of all, Jeppe, thanks for coming. It's really a pleasure for the festival to have you here. It's an honor. Uh, we are just finishing the bottle that we started as we were <laughs> uh, getting lunch. Um, I'm going to ask some questions, but uh, the point is that if anyone has a question in the middle of any time, just raise your hand and we're going to stop because uh, for experience that I know that the questions of the crowd or the audience are better than the ones I'm going to ask. So uh, raise your hand whatever you want, and uh, we're going to stop. The first thing that I wanted to ask you, as you are a creator and a writer, is if you remember what you wanted to be when you grew up, when you were a child. Do you remember that? Uh, actually, the first, thing, the first thing I wanted to be was I wanted to be that guy who cleans the chimneys yeah. uh, in the houses. Because like in Mary Poppins. That, yeah, no, not because I, I th there was a Danish song that was about I that am? guy, uh, and he, he he got the lady in the end. He was there was a princess, and and I thought he was immensely cool because he had like a ladder, yeah, to crawl and everything. I thought that was the coolest in the world. I was like three years old, but uh, but I walked around with uh, with a ladder all the time. Uh, no, but but I, uh, later on I wanted to be a director. I wanted to make uh, movies. Uh, and uh, then I got a job uh, at a TV station uh, where uh, I was, um, I, I think I was 23 or 24 at the time when I w was promoted into a job where I was uh, basically in acquisitions. I was buying TV series for the TV station and I fell completely in love with TV series. Uh, I, uh, We're talking about what year? Uh, I think it was 1999, I think. So, so it was, was before the golden age of yeah. series. But it, I mean, 1999 is when HBO actually started. So yeah. it was the year of Sopranos, and it was also, incidentally, the year of West Wing. <laughs> uh, and, and the level of TV at that time was so immensely, uh, immensely high. It was also uh, Homicide Life on the Street and, and those kind of shows. So I was completely blown away, and I realized that that uh, the movies that Hollywood were doing at the time were uh, a, a little bit boring, a little bit too simple. They weren't speaking to to like like the audience as adults, but the TV series they were they were like uh, they were real pieces of art, uh, like the, like the movies from Hollywood had been in like in in the 70s. So uh, so I fell in love with that. And I realized also at the same time that everybody in Denmark was still referring to American TV series as something bad, which was yeah. cra crazy. So, uh, and then I saw an, uh, a, a, you know, a documentary about the TV series Friends that was like behind the scenes where you can see uh, how they made Friends. Uh, and there was, uh, there was the first glimpse I had of a writer's room. There was like the, the, the 12, brightest young writers in Hollywood were sitting in one room coming up with ideas for friends uh, and it looked like the most fun place to be in the world. So you wanted to be in that room? I wanted to be in that room. For you wanted to be the, the smart guy that yeah. was thinking about yeah. serious. So and, and I thought I, I need to be in a room where you just sit around coming up with uh, stories for, for a, a TV series. And, and so I changed my course. I did, uh, didn't want to apply for being a director. I wanted, I started I, or I applied at the film school like two months later yeah. as a writer. Uh, and, and as a director, I had been rejected, I think, three <laughs> times. Okay. But as a writer, I came uh, straight through, and I've never looked back. 
and you have any kind of anger uh, with uh, all these people that said, no, you're not a good director. No, no. <laughs> okay. But they, they were right. I, 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 <laughs> okay. You are better right creator than definite, director? Definitely. Okay, yeah. so you wanted to be in that writer's room, but your first, first glimpse or, or your first highlight about series was comedy, but you haven't done anything no. likely. <laughs> comedy, more, you've done uh, uh, Borgen, you've done uh, 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 Follow Money, so it's really drama. So w what led you from this first thing that I say, okay, comedy, to drama, or you had it clear from the from the very beginning that uh, drama was your uh, um, ambience. In uh, in the beginning at film school, I wrote a little bit of like action comedy and romantic comedy and so on. But I've never written anything like sitcom. I would never do it. I'm not. I'm not that funny. <laughs> it <laughs> really takes a lot of. I think it's really a hard craft. You really have to be have to have funny bones. Uh, and uh, and even though I, I hope my friends find me entertaining when I'm out with them and a bit drunk, uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a comedy writer. Okay. Uh, uh, and yeah, I think my, my nature is to write drama. Uh, but I, I, I love comedies uh, just as much as I love watching drama. I, when, when I... When I work, I work too much. <laughs> I work very long days. And if you are uh, uh, the head writer or showrunner of a TV series, you are always working. And uh, and and when I did follow the money, I worked from like uh, 9:30 in the morning till like 10 10:30 in the evening in the evening, six days a week. So it's a it's a lot of work. And when I come home at that time, <laughs> I, I don't want to watch drama. <laughs> I want to watch Family Guy or something like that <laughs> uh, because okay. my brain has been dealing with drama all day and I'm trying just to, to let it go. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to change the, 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 the schedule that I have and, and I, I, I'm, I'm going to begin for, from the other side. So uh, I'm just talking about follow the money because uh, something that you've said just right now uh, made me think about uh, follow the money. Follow the money for those who haven't seen it, it's a... Uh, uh, for uh, a drama, but uh, about uh, police and drug dealers and, and benign, financial fin crime. And how yeah. the, all, all the uh, world around drugs are uh, going to be financed. So if you've seen The Wire, you have to see Follow the Money. Uh, and just from the beginning, uh, I realized that there's uh, like a link between uh, almost two of the characters. Uh, and is the the stress that your work uh, comes with? I mean, you, we have uh, a police character that uh, is so stressed that he cannot sleep, and we have uh, a guy that's uh, helping the drug uh, dealers to to clean the, the the money that is really really stressful. So you said that uh, you work a lot, and when you come home. You don't want to think about it, but you have characters that are thinking about the job or the work all the time. And and this, there's a phrase in the first uh, episode when they just catch some of the bad guys and and they say, "But yeah, but it, it wasn't the thing because we, if we are just catching these guys, this is just uh, catching the 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 garbage. Uh, we are like garbage collectors, mm. and I want the whole thing." So. What I want to ask is, when you go home, you are as stressed as your characters, and uh, you are really the same character that goes around and around and around and all over again about your job, or yeah, you are like the other police guy that say, okay, I'm the garbage collector, but I just, okay, I have my job, I work eight hours, 10 hours, I go home and I'm just with my wife and taking some wine, I forget about it all. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm the guy that is not able to to let go of the job. Definitely. So you don't uh, sleep. <laughs> no, yeah, I, 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 I sleep actually. That's the one thing. I'm, I'm, even, even in my most stressful uh, uh, times, and and there are a lot of stressful times as a as a showrunner. Uh, um, the one thing I actually 
can do is sleep, which I'm very fortunate because I have <laughs> colleagues that that uh, has a trouble with sleeping, uh, and for them it's uh, it's really hell. I mean, I used a lot of my experience with them to describe uh, the police character in 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 the series, and my even my twin sister actually has trouble <laughs> sleeping, but I can sleep. I can uh, I, I I I work all day till I'm almost not a human anymore, but I can actually <laughs> manage to go to sleep. And it's been like that with all the series you've done. I mean, uh, with Bogan, who are one of the, the main writers and co-creator of the series, but uh, with Follow the Money, now you are responsible. You're the showrunner of the series. I don't know if, if it has changed a little bit, the role and the, the way you feel about the, the series, or you've been always working like that. Okay, th that's my series. If I have to work on that, uh, it's, it's always my thing. I don't yeah. know. I've, I've, it's always been like that. Even when I just came out of film school and was uh, an episode writer on a TV show called Summer for like, I think, nine months I was there. I wrote three episodes uh, and uh, I, I worked the same way. I, I, I wanted them to be perfect. <laughs> and I always uh, I, I always worked like that. And it's, um, it's probably very commendable, but it's also, uh, it's, it's not very healthy and it's not very practical and okay. I don't I don't have uh, kids yet I just got uh, married uh, but uh, this is yeah. <laughs> congratulations <laughs> uh, no but 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 uh, but we are, we are discussing quite a lot what we will do if we have a child but uh, we'll we'll make it work okay I open the picture a little bit because I have uh, a little question as well about Denmark I, I don't know you you, you work on on on, on a on a Denmark uh, TV channel that do uh, one, two series uh, per year. But this series we can recall, uh, Follow the Money, Borgen, uh, The Killing, uh, The Legacy. It's a series that uh, it's been done uh, in a country that it's what, five, six million people living there, but it's gone universal. I mean, the whole world have seen uh, those series. Uh, how do you do a series uh, in, a, in a s such a small country, uh, uh, which is a uh, little uh, even more than Catalonia, but uh, that you had the, the interest of the whole world, or, you're, or uh, that you have the whole world watching you, what are you, you doing? It's, it's a big question. There are probably more uh, than one answer to that. For me, the most important thing is, no, I think there would be two elements. When, 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 Danish, when Danish TV series um, started, I mean, I, I'll, go, I'll do it briefly, but just very shortly. Uh, we have time, no, don't okay, worry. Good. I mean, Danish TV series at a point in the, in the 90s was so horrible, it, they, uh, they w weren't working at all. They did one big historical TV show that was a complete failure, and everybody realized at DR, the, uh, the, the broadcaster I work at, that they had to do something completely different. And they took a number of key people and sent them to Hollywood, uh, to, to, to uh, Stephen Bochco and David Mills' room uh, on NYPD Blue, uh, and they were in the room there, they were on set, they learned how to, to produce uh, the two camera system, they, they learned how to work with the writer's room uh, and all that stuff. And they came back and they completely re reworked the way that things were being done at DR in the 90s. Then they made a number of TV series that became gradually better and better and better. And, and b in the end was very, very successful in Denmark, but was not traveling that much. Okay, uh, and, and, uh, sorry. Yeah. It, there was a, s uh, a series that you say, okay, this was the, the game changer in Denmark. Uh, I mean, uh, for the, the golden age of uh, TV was The Sopranos with HBO producing mm -hmm. a series that was yeah. different. In Denmark, you, you can recall a name that say, okay, yeah. it was this one. There's, there's one crime show that was called Reiseholet. In English, it's called Unit One, but I don't think it's been watched okay. that much abroad, uh, which was very effective. Then there was one called Chronicle, Chronicle, which had two million viewers every Sunday night out of five 
1.5 million people. Uh, that was huge. And then uh, the next generation on, on top of that would be uh, 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 the, uh, the killing and, and Borgen and, and the bridge that came successively uh, and changed the game completely because all, all of those three shows managed to travel. But nobody expected them to, to travel uh, and work around uh, the world. I mean, um, maybe I'm straying apart from your question, <laughs> but actually it's quite a, f a fun story. I've told it before, so maybe some of you have heard it, but when we, when we did Borgen, the first time uh, we were invited, before the premiere, I was invited uh, to go to France to a TV series festival there, one of the few ones that were around back then. Uh, together with the head of drama of DR, the big guy, the powerful guy. And we went down there and we had a screening of the first two episodes and people liked it and that was great for us both to see. And I was very proud of what I'd done, even though we hadn't broadcast it yet. But I felt this is quite good, this will work. Uh, so I asked the head of drama, could we maybe send it uh, for consideration? to the International Emmy Committee, just to see if they like it, maybe. Um, and, uh, and he said, he laughed, and he said, no, Jeppe. Come no, on. <laughs> it will never, ever travel. This is a show about Danish coalition politics, boring Danish coalition politics. Nobody will understand it in the world. So it will go to Sweden. It will go to Norway, nowhere else. And I said, please, Ingolf, could we just at least maybe send it for consideration to no, he said, he said, okay, yeah, to basically to keep you quiet, <laughs> we, I will send it to Pris Italia. And then we'll get to know that nobody cared. <laughs> and then uh, we won uh, one of the main prizes there. And I think he was really shocked by that. <laughs> uh, and then it just started moving around and it was bought in the UK and suddenly we won a buff BAFTA and, and things just changed quickly. Okay, I, I, I think, okay, I, I'm... I'm putting myself being a writer in Catalonia and writing um, a series about politics here, which we have a lot of food <laughs> because the, the political uh, situation is quite hard now. And, but I think that the first thing, and we talk about it during lunch, but the, 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 the first thing that it would happen is that all the journalists that are covering the parliament things and all, we want to say, yeah, but this is not real. I mean, if y you said that that I if you are doing a, a police drama, maybe the police guy at home says, mm. this is not real because it's not the way we work. But with politics, everybody is so on Twitter, uh, reading newspaper and all, that everybody know or seems to know everything. So when you began to write uh, a Bogan, uh, did you have, the, the feeling that y all the journalists would come say, come on, this is fiction, it has nothing to do, because, and, and, and this is gonna be my next question, but uh, you, you had the main character, there was a woman uh, being prime minister, and it had never been a prime minister, a, f a female prime minister in Denmark, so uh, what were your feelings and your relation with the press at the time uh, about that? Um, it's quite interesting. Uh, not because of the female prime minister. I think nobody in Denmark thought that that was really weird. Uh, but but uh, but actually, when we started broadcasting, uh, uh, the press was really <laughs> quite hard on us okay. because uh, they. I mean, a, a, a exactly as you say, if you do a crime series, then there are police people watching the crime series, and at home they will be saying to their wife, "This is not my job. This is not how it is," the, uh, and they will get a bit angry. But nobody will. <laughs> They, the, the, it will stay in the house, but w if you write about politics and journalists and, and that kind of, all those people, they have very easy access to media. So what happened was that when we came out, uh, because, I mean, when you do a drama show, you have to cut a few corners. It's not a documentary. You have to you tell a drama. It has to seem very credible. We worked hard to make it seem credible, but of course there are some things that you you, you have to uh, um, make slightly more understandable to a larger audience because it's a complex political world. 
Uh, and all those guys, immediately, they started attacking us in the press because all of them, they were either journalists or they just called a journalist and say, hey, I have an opinion on Borgen. Uh, and, and, and actually, in the beginning, uh, Sisi, who plays uh, Birgitte Nyborg and, and, and I, we had to stop reading, <laughs> reading the papers because uh, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't that funny for the f first uh, five weeks or something. And then it started changing because some politicians came out and said, actually, even though they caught a few corners, that's like that's what like watching my life. It's it's like that being a politician. And then suddenly, uh, I think the, the the journalists and the critics and so on they started listening <laughs> to the politicians. If the politician says that this is the way it is, then they are probably onto something. And then uh, it, it, the the critique started to die down, die down. And then we were also in Denmark uh, a <laughs> success. So it was different. Uh, pro Producing the the first season, the first season to the second one. I mean, when you, when you do a Bogan two, you are already saying, okay, everybody says that's cool, uh, or or you had the same feeling about being watched, uh, about every phrase, everything that you are uh, being uh, producing or writing. We were actually, I think, we were. When we premiered the first season, we were far into the second season already because okay. at DR, the thing that I, I didn't mention before to your question and how, what is the most important factor of uh, the f uh, making Danish TV series a success abroad uh, is very much, it's the trust at DR, at DR, Dan Denmark, Denmark Radio, where uh, I've been working, that has been producing the TV series. They have a lot of trust uh, in the writer. Um, and uh, um, yeah, yeah, and and, and that during the first uh, season, exactly. you already know that you're going to the yeah. second. So they also they actually ordered two seasons from the beginning, which is exceptional, and I don't think they do it anymore. But they did that with uh, the killing. They did that with uh, uh, the Borgen and follow the money, and uh, and it's it's not necessarily only a good thing. But it's it it speaks about the level of trust they have in the creatives, uh, th that they really trust the the writer's vision, um, uh, unlike I think almost anywhere else in the TV world, because uh, you always you always get like notes. Uh, I don't know how many of you are professionals and so on, but notes are. Uh, 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 the, the, all the executives, all the bosses, they have an opinion on, on what you are writing and they fear this will not be good enough, this will not be good enough, this will not be good enough, this should be different, she should be more likable, he should be a tall guy instead of a fat guy, and so on. And all those notes from different angles, if you get enough of those, the TV series you make will be bland and, and, and say nothing uh, and, and you will lose uh, the strong vision. But at DR, they respect the vision so much, though there's only one executive that gives notes, and that's the head of drama. And she reads, and she gives notes, or he now. Um, and, and even if they don't, if I disagree with the note from the bosses, I say, I disagree, I don't think that's my vision, uh, then they will back off and they will say, okay, we respect that, that's your vision, uh, and then they will trust that. The, the flip side of that, of course, is that if something goes wrong, <laughs> then uh, there's only one yeah, person yeah, yeah, to blame. Yeah. You're going to be guilty yeah, and you're being yeah. hung yes. uh, okay. publicly, That's <laughs> publicly <laughs> which I think it's, yeah. uh, is the best way to finish it. Uh, but I have a question because uh, Borgen has three seasons. Uh, the Legacy has three seasons. Uh, you have a limit of t uh, 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 that you already know that it's going to be like, okay, Borgen is going to be like three seasons and that's going to be all. So, I, I mean, I, we're not going to have uh, Borgen 4? I mean, it, it used to be that we say, at DR, they, you, you get two seasons, or you used to get two seasons, okay. and then if it was, if there was still something to, to, to tell, to tell uh, of course, the, TV, the, the viewer numbers had to be okay, but that was not the decisive thing, uh, even though I think with, uh, th there's been a lot of series that had high numbers, but if there was not really a real reason to do the third season, they would just finish up two seasons. Um, oh, sorry, I, I lost track. No, 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 if it is gonna be a, th oh, yeah. a four, a, a uh, and four. So, I, so after th three seasons, both with Follow the Money, uh, it's, it's, it's finished. Okay. But nowadays, with this world of TV series that are changing all the time at the moment, uh, I don't think you should never say never. Okay. Uh, so it's possible. We, we, we don't know. Okay. 
And uh, just to finish uh, about this whole uh, production thing, um, as you are a small country, but you, DA, DA is, is investing a lot of, mo of money in, in every season because it's not cheap no. to do a, a Borgen uh, series and all. It means that you are producing just few, uh, a few of uh, one, two, or three series per year, focusing all the money in one series, or you're producing a lot, but we have just seen one or two series that you're no. producing at a time. I think, uh, I think people outside of Denmark has, if they are interested in Danish series, they watched all the DR series. We only, at DR, I say we, I'm not there anymore, actually, <laughs> okay. but, uh, but I've been institutionalized. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, but they, they do 10 episodes in the spring and 10 episodes in the autumn. And that's basically what they uh, do. So it will be Borgen, uh, it will be the killing in the spring and uh, and Borgen in the autumn and the killing again in spring and Borgen in the autumn and the killing and then and then at the some at some point the bridge will come and take over and then the, ho the, the whole season. budget goes to one series the, yeah uh, at, or two per 20 year 20 episodes each year almost the full budget it's it starts it, it has started to change but for 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 uh, the whole golden age <laughs> of DR uh, it was like that so I don't know, but, it, but how do you end up being one of the writers of the few series that is being there? I mean, uh, I'm sure that th there's a lot of people that want to write that series that's going to be broadcast on springtime or autumn. So uh, what's the, uh, which is the, the, the way they select or doing the, the selection of the people that are going to, to write or, or being the showrunner of that series? It, th there is a fight. It's difficult. Uh, it's uh, it's already been done for the same uh, ten people for the last ten years. I don't know how it works. I would I, I would say mm, uh, it is difficult, and uh, 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 they call you, you don't call them. <laughs> I would say <laughs> okay. I, is I mean, and it, there's a tendency that the, all the people that get to be a head writer, showrunner on DR, they have been formerly episode writers on a f on a on a on an earlier show. So both Adam Prise, who was the head writer of Borgen, and uh, Sean Zweistrup, who was the uh, head writer of uh, The Killing, they used to be episode writers on a TV show called Taxa uh, uh, on, 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 on DR. And I think uh, there was a number of episode writers on that show. And I think basically DR saw that two of them, or probably more, but but that those two guys at least had something special. They really wanted to give them a chance to develop something. But of course, if, if you start, they ask you if you have an idea, then you have to have a, not just an idea, a, a really good idea. <laughs> and then you have to convince them that you can actually run it. So it's not that simple, but in but but it's very much, uh, it, it, it used to be at least, it very much a system that you grow up into the, into the system and, and you, um, yeah, and, and, and you prove yourself, and then you maybe get your own show. And, but there's one more thing, actually. If you want to have a show at DR, if you are calling DR tomorrow, um, there's one thing you need to know, and that is that they, they, they don't want to hear ideas for TV series where that's not about society. They don't, okay. they, they, uh, the, it's a public service broadcaster. Uh, they have uh, public service ob obligations, and the way that they... Uh, 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 think of those uh, obligations is that when they do a very expensive TV series like the ones we do, uh, we use a lot of money, even though it's not as expensive as an English TV series or whatever, we use a lot of money. Uh, it has to appeal to a lar large part of the audience. Uh, a, lo a lot of Danes has to watch it. And it has to speak about something that is very important to, uh, to, to the Danish people at this very moment. So it has to speak about something in society that is very relevant and very relevant right now, uh, and and if and that I think that's also one of the secrets of the series that why they appeal so well because they they really are about something. They, they we try to to tap into important stuff that is going on in society, and of course, if you did this, I mean the wrong way you would end up with a show that would be like boring, didactic. We just want to teach the public something uh, uh, old-fashioned uh, old left-wing-ish uh, way of 
uh, seeing the audience as stupid or something, that would be horrible. But I think actually if you do it right, if you, uh, if you actually manage to speak about something that is going on right now in society, it will help you get a lot of, larger audience. And with these TV series at DR, we had huge numbers. We had, um, we had to have, back then, it's changed a bit now with streaming and everything. We had to have at least one million viewers uh, when when uh, when we did a show out of five six million people, it said in my contract when I when I was doing Borgen, it said as my contract, Jeve uh, Gjavigam is writing an episode for the TV series Borgen that has at least one million viewers. So if it didn't, then they could uh, easily yeah. fire me. Uh, yeah. Uh, so knowing that, to uh, who are you thinking about when uh, uh, when you're writing? I mean. Uh, sometimes a series like a novel, so, and, and when you write a novel, may, you are maybe thinking about, okay, this kind of people or, or this person is going to read that novel or is going to watch that series. So when you were, uh, I don't know, uh, writing uh, for Bogan, you were uh, thinking about somebody, uh, a, a figure, uh, uh, so, or, or, or you were thinking about, okay, I want the whole world to watch this series, so I'm going to do it uh, universal, even if it's about uh, Danish politicians and all. What, 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 what are you thinking about, and who are you thinking about when you write? First of all, I would say both with Borgen, which, uh, but also with Follow the Money, but with Borgen, we, we, wanted, we wanted to speak to the Danish audience, not an international audience. And even after the success of Borg and with Follow the Money, I wanted to speak to a Danish audience because getting one million viewers <laughs> is very, very difficult in itself. So if I also thought that I have to appeal to uh, Germany and Spain and... Uh, you can lose work, your head. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so I focus on the Danish audience. And I think also that's quite important that I write a story that has to seem credible to 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 um, to the people of Denmark, to 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 my friends, <laughs> to my family, to to uh, and and if it's credible to them, then it might travel. Uh, but I don't think I think the worst thing is trying to think about something that is really international and appeals to everyone, because then I think really it will appeal to no one. Uh, because it will lose your, uh, the soul. Uh, yeah, 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 it's it's a little bit uh, that that. Even uh, I might say a catchphrase from David Simon is "fuck the average viewer." So it's like, okay, I'm gonna treat my audience as smart people, and my audience is Denmark. And then if the the, the people from Denmark likes it, yep. why not the whole world yeah. are gonna yeah. like it? And and when about when designing characters, we really with Borgen, we we. Um, we had a big challenge, we felt, because we knew that the show had to feel very, very real, very, very credible. Uh, it had to look like real politics in Denmark, because if not, people wouldn't buy it. But, uh, but at, at the same time, because we were doing from a public broadcaster, it could not have too much relationship to real politics, because then people would say, you're trying to make party politics with your TV show. So the thing we did was that to make it look credible, we, we took um, existing political players, real people, uh, and we, uh, we m put them into a blender <laughs> and mixed them up uh, in, in the sense that we, we thought every character that's in Borgen, especially all the political characters, the party leaders and so on, uh, they, none of them look like one person in, in Danish politics, but they all have different they all have different traits or something for, from like two or three uh, real okay. persons. So they are all like conglomerates of, uh, of real people. So, so you feel you know them, you feel you've read about them in the papers, but you don't know really exactly who is who, but they feel real to you. But yeah. you, you did came up with a, a new party that was your invention, or did it uh, really exist? Yeah. A, a party was none from the left, none from the right, but a little bit uh, of all. And again, that was a big thing. Uh, we had to make it credible. We could maybe have done a TV show in Denmark. We had at that time seven political parties in the gov uh, in the parliament. Uh, we could have just said in Borgen, "Hey, there's only two. Yeah. But people wouldn't have recognized that world in, in Denmark. They would think that that's silly. 
that's not how the, the real life is in Denmark. So, so we had to have more parties. And what we did to make it very credible for, for people was that we made our own seven parties, uh, exactly seven parties. And each party had a different name than the real one, so we could speak freely about them. But everybody would know that party is that party, that party is that party, that party is that party. So that made it free for us. So, for instance, if we said something uh, about uh, um, our, la our Labour Party in, in the TV series, we could speak completely freely, even though everybody knew that that was the same as the Social Democrats in Denmark. Right. But it wasn't called the Social Democrats in our TV series, so they, the, nobody could claim that, that we were being political in that sense. And, and it wasn't uh, any kind of pressure from the political parties. I mean, you, you were in a, in, a, in a TV broadcast channel that was a public broadcast channel. So uh, as we understand it, there's always some uh, smart guy from the party that calls the TV and say, hey, yeah, well, in season two, uh, maybe you're going to be sweeter with us because in Mm. So, y did you felt any kind of pressure uh, publicly or, or, or in, in a private way uh, when you were writing uh, already the second and the se and the third uh, season? Not not just the second and the third. Actually, even even with the first, because we do so few TV series at DR, uh, very quickly it became a rumor that th that at DR that at that time mainly did police shows of different sorts with a society angle, but still a lot of police shows, suddenly there was a rumor in, in the real Borgen uh, that, um, that DR would do a political show. Uh, and I think also because we wanted, we wanted to go to the real Borgen and ask if we could make the, maybe film a little bit in there. Okay. Uh, because Borgen was back then controlled by a right-wing uh, party, uh, right-wing go government, and they did don't like DR very much, so they said no. But that started a rumor, and then suddenly one uh, one guy from from the far right party he started attacking us in the press, and he attacked us really uh, hard. Be, pr before before uh, the, the first episode was broadcast, one one year before the first one was. Uh, I mean, we were we were very early on, <laughs> uh, but I mean, we luckily our bosses were at dr were, were steady and cool and they didn't panic and they just sheltered us and said do what you want to do uh, we trust you because we knew we were not going to make a political a party political series we were not going to make a tv series that were moving people from right to left or left to right that was not our purpose we wanted people to engage with democracy that was our main goal with uh, writing borgen so we in that sense we felt safe but but this guy he came out hard at us and he said this is gonna be like a, almost like a communist TV series and it'll be a scandal and people should close DR and all that kind of stuff. But um, but, but that's a lot of pressure when you when yeah you it was I mean this was I I, I I had been out of film school for like one and a half years at that time or something like that so that was a little <laughs> bit scary. <laughs> okay, uh, since you wrote Borgen One, there's been uh, two. Uh, female prime ministers in 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 Denmark. So th the first female prime minister in Denmark was in Borgen, uh, and but I can recall that in Borgen the main character is a woman. In Forbidden or uh, the killing, the main mm -hmm. character is a woman. In the legacy, there are strong women mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, do you think that one of the points that I'm making? Uh, some kind of point, a different point from Denmark to the war is that you are uh, putting women in the center of your crea um, serious creation or, or fiction creation. I mean, I don't know if it was in purpose uh, or, or not, but if I see uh, Brown Brown, uh, The Bridge, uh, if I see uh, The Legacy for Wilson and all, there are always women in front of it. So it's in purpose, or it just came out like the ideas? To, uh, to be honest, I think it's quite, it was quite natural, I think. Uh, but it's not normal, because if I, if I see the 10 no, sure. uh, uh, principal series in, in, I don't know, in the States, th no. there's almost never no. women in, in front of it. I think, I think at some point at DR, people realized it's so weird that they're not stronger female characters around and 
and uh, why shouldn't we do it? Uh, I think, and with of obviously with Borgen, it was part of the pitch that was this was the story of the first Danish female prime minister. But it was one year prior to you. you really had a, yeah, yeah. a female yeah. prime minister, yeah. so... I th yeah, I think it, we, we... When Adam, who was the head writer and had the original idea, um, uh, I think he knew and we knew when we were in the writer's room that even though we felt that we lived in a society that was very, very equal between the sexes, not not a perfect world, but, but on the forefront uh, of, of, of that development, uh, and and still we knew that we had never had a female prime minister and we also knew that when we had, we knew that at some point we would have obviously, but when we would have a female prime minister, she would be treated in a different way than all the men, even though we considered ourselves so equal. Uh, because for instance, the, the, we, we talked to different uh, female politicians about this and they, they, they said, you are absolutely right. If I become the prime minister one day, it will be different. And the reason is that uh, if uh, Lars Lykke, who was a prime minister back then uh, also, uh, uh, if, he, if he works very hard, there's a big, uh, big international meeting coming up. He work, works very hard. He stays uh, at Borgen working nonstop all around the clock uh, for like five days. He doesn't go home to his family. Uh, then he's just a very, very cool and, and, and a dedicated prime minister. But if Lars Lykke instead was a woman and she was working very hard on this international meeting for five days, staying on Borg and, and didn't go home to her family, then people in the press would say, she's a bad mother. And, and that would hurt her in the, in the pulse. And that is insane. Uh, and we were very, uh, uh, for us, that was such an interesting dilemma that even though we felt that we were so much on the forefront, there were clear differences between being a man and woman in that role, and we wanted to explore that. Uh, and, and, and I think the way that our TV show is about society, as I said before, it has to be about society, it's not really just because it's about politics, and politics is always something to do with society, but it's, uh, Borgen is a story about uh, what happens in a modern society where both men and women are, uh, um, have the right to have a career, a big career, uh, but what happens with family uh, in, in that society? Uh, and these are dilemmas that not only prime ministers experience, <laughs> these are dilemmas that a lot of Danish families experience. How do you deal with this? How do you tackle it? How do you, how do you make sure that, that the, the, uh, the wife in the family is allowed to just as much to have a career, and at the same time, uh, you want your children to grow up uh, 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 with a steady home life, and uh, and then we, I mean, we just gave Birgitte the, uh, the the most important job in Denmark, <laughs> and said, even though Philip has a career, good luck, uh, because uh, her job is more important than yours. Uh, how will this work? Um, and obviously, in Borgen, it didn't go very well for the first season. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we thought that was very uh, interesting dilemmas, and we knew that that uh, we met a lot of people who said in the beginning when we showed Borg, and they, a lot of people in, in powerful positions that came home and say, oh, you did Borgen? Especially if they were men. <laughs> they, they came to us, you said, you did Borgen? Every Sunday I have an argument with my wife at home. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, but I with Borgen and, 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 and this kind of, uh, well, you, you put some questions that, as you said, it, they had never been put because there were men in power. But uh, you, you, you made, you were really fine doing it because uh, it, it, Bogen, it, it didn't end up as a soap opera. Mm. I mean, you, you, you had your question is like, okay, uh, when you are back home, what's gonna be like with your, your life, with your husband, with your child, your sex life, and your health, no? It's, it's all the questions that you're putting about. But how do you, draw the line between the personal life that uh, this politician, the prime minister, uh, is supposed to have and, and, and a soap opera. I mean, I mean, okay, it's your private life. It's because you are just putting some universal questions like hey, when women have some kind of power, there are some kind of issues that just 
grow and everybody realize that, 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 so, uh, that, that these issues uh, exist? Or, or how do you write this uh, draw this line uh, between uh, uh, political drama, mm, personal issues, matters, and uh, w when you're mm. writing, uh, how you feel mm. about it? Because you, you are men writing about women. <laughs> yeah, don't mention that. <laughs> okay. uh, um, uh, no, it's true. The writer's room of Borgen was free men. <laughs> um, but it was considered feminist from our point of view all the time. Um, uh, I think... I think the way not to make that a soap or make it true is that we actually we wanted to do a show about people in politics, and our main characters, characters, two of our three main characters were women, and we were dealing with l issues that came up with them, but not only issues around uh, equality, equality between the sexes. We wanted also to treat Birgitte just as any other. Uh, character, a powerful character, and and for us that was also uh, that was a important viewpoint from us that 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 it shouldn't be different if she's a woman or a man. Uh, uh, so 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 we basically it's a it's a political drama series. We we knew we we weren't going to re remake West Wing, which is very much just about the politics. Of course, there's a first lady and so on, but it's very much about the politics. We knew we wanted to take the audience home also, but 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 first and foremost, uh, all the drama takes place in the world of politics, and then around that, there's the family life. Uh, so, so we could have done it the other way around, and then it would maybe have been uh, more easy to consider it a soap if we had had the family life like 70% of each episode, and then a little bit of, about politics. Uh, but, but to us, the political cases were always the ones that were driving the story forward in each episode, and then they were pushing to different aspects of her family life. So th the family life, life was like the context, mm. the context, and, and, and the political issue was like the, the motto that yeah. ke keep the yeah. uh, kept the, the history. Because it's, you, you're not talking only about uh, the private life of a politician, but you are talking about journalists. I mean, uh, the, the one of the main characters is Casper Yule, but Casper Yule has never an issue about his personal life, even if he has to deal about uh, a dead man or whatever, he always seems to know what to do about it. But when it comes to a, a, a female character, there's always uh, some kind of uh, added uh, pressure on, on, on her. I mean, uh, you have uh, this journalist that uh, have uh, this affair with uh, his boss in, and her boss in, in, in TV. So, so I, I think that you, you, you focused uh, in some way in, on, on the real problems of the female, uh, on, on female characters in each one of, the, of their jobs, even if you are on, poli on politics or you are a journalist or you are whatever. So you were thinking about that when, when you were writing? I, I, I think actually, uh, I think I, I think Casper also has a lot of issues uh, with his uh, private life. It's just a little more complex in that sense that he has he has a very troubled background and, and sure. uh, I think actually we had when when you when you do uh, if you wanted to pitch tomorrow a TV show at DR <laughs> there's on one more thing you need to know uh, and uh, it you have to have a clear premise. They will ask you for a clear premise. What is this show about? In one sentence. Uh, and the premise that we found for Borgen uh, was uh, that um, uh, one sentence, can you remain in power while remaining yourself? And, and this, this had, of course, a lot to do with Birgitte's storyline, but not only Birgitte's storyline. It also had to do with, with Katrina and Casper's storyline. How can you, uh, uh, can you do your job and be powerful and good at that job and, and stay in that job <laughs> successfully uh, while still remaining yourself? while not uh, hiding yourself away or destroying your own soul. Uh, and that had to do with all the characters in all the episodes. So that was like the guideline. And we knew every time we found uh, a storyline, there were many like funny storylines. Adam, he's a really funny guy. He could write comedy, definitely. Uh, but we had funny storylines that didn't deal with this premise. And then we just had to push them aside and go look for a storyline that was uh, ab about the premise because, uh, and I think that creates a strong unity in a TV series. And DR always asks you that. <laughs> and, and you have uh, an answer to that question? Sorry. Yeah. 
Go ahead, Eva. We have a question there. So I don't know if we have a mic. Uh, we can, yeah? Okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, we have until 7 o'clock, or how long? We have until we have 7 o'clock. Uh, uh, we have 10 minutes left, okay. as we said. Uh, perdona, sí. te he cortado, pero como decías que podíamos preguntar uh, y veía que quedaba poco tiempo. Sí, sí, ya. Um, yo quería agradecerle Borgen. A mí me ha dado unas cuantas horas de felicidad uh, tu serie. Eh? Quería agradecerte la honestidad. Esta uh, manera. Sorry, are you listening to the translation? No, I, I'm not. I'm okay. Not, okay. Not no, 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 okay, okay. I'm not in the translation. Uh, so, uh, she, she's just grateful for uh, doing Borgen because uh, you, you've brought uh, so many hours of happiness to, to her. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, de, y de honestidad en los personajes y sobre todo una mirada uh, crítica pero a la vez um, humana de la política ¿no? uh, creo que es muy relevante que haya series uh, que han sido hechas para un público determinado pero que en cambio han tomado esta dimensión internacional Vale, a través de la política. Tra 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 Perdona, sí, sí. Sí. No, just, uh, it's, it, she's grateful for uh, uh, you have brought this honesty uh, and, and uh, yeah, uh, yeah, maybe, no, maybe it's going to be better. Okay, no. uh, I'm not a good translator, but no, 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 uh, no. okay, uh, yeah, yeah, we put it on, so so it's going to be, yeah, yeah. okay, uh, just, just grateful because uh, that. But continue, but continue, I can see you. Sorry. No, mm, perdona, eh, que me estoy alargando. Uh, no, felicitarte, de verdad. Creo que, que es una serie fantástica y que abre los ojos a, a este, estos medios ¿no? que siempre nos están diciendo que solo podemos tener un tipo de, de series es, y que esto es lo que gusta al público, ¿no? cuando en realidad es una serie que no tiene ni muertos ni especialmente mucho sexo y en cambio ha encantado a mucha gente ¿no? y que se trata de esto. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, th there was not a question, it was just a praise. Uh, but I, I think we have a question there. A short uh, commentary of mine. Uh, first, thank you very much. Uh, it's a masterpiece, Borgen. And uh, I would uh, show it to our politicians here to learn how to make a good coalition. Or a bad coalition, <laughs> but to make a coalition and make a government, okay? Yeah. And on the other hand, I would ask you, you personally, did you participate in the casting of the main figures, of the main uh, Character. characters of that series, Borgen? Yes. And if you did, uh, a big hug, because <laughs> it's <laughs> wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. No, the casting was, uh, uh, if I should just comment on that very briefly, um, it was, again, with the casting, DR, at DR, you are allowed to be brave. Uh, and the casting is a little bit unusual. Uh, they often are at DR series. The thing is, the main three characters, um, two of them were unknown actors. Uh, the two young uh, people, Casper uh, uh, and Katrina, those roles, they were unknown uh, uh, actors. Uh, one of them was just out of film school. Uh, no, of the theater school. Uh, and then the third one, who plays Birgitte Nyborg, uh, Cisse Babette, uh, who's an absolutely dramatic genius. She was, a, she was not a dramatic actress. She was a comedian. She had trained, I think she was even at the Clown Academy of Paris. Uh, she was a comedian. She was a successful uh, 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 film star in Denmark in comedies. I think she had done one drama and she, uh, that was uh, well received. But this was definitely not what she was known for, and it was considered a quite a big uh, um, risk that we took when we cast her. Nobody really felt secure that she would be able to, to carry uh, 20 hours, 30 hours in the end of a drama series, and she does it so formidable. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so I, uh, I'm very proud that we did it, uh, uh, but it, it was actually at the time quite brave uh, casting. Any other questions? Yeah. 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 Hi. If you were given the chance to uh, write a political drama series about any uh, society around the world, which one would be and why? 
Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, He's two talking about uh, we cats on are Yeah, I know, I know, I <laughs> know, I know. Um, uh, there are too much going on in politics at the moment. <laughs> um, uh, when I see Borgen now, I feel that even though I love it and I'm uh, very proud of it, I think it seems like something from a different age and time, and I'm... Uh, uh, and it makes me sad. Uh, I think politics has changed so much. I don't think uh, I can look around and find any Birgit Nuborg at the moment anywhere in the world. Uh, I wish I could. Not, there are not a lot of them, at least. Uh, and I think that's sad. She's not, her world is not the world of Donald Trump. If we had tried to make a character like Donald Trump back then, nobody would have believed it in the <laughs> TV series. Uh, and it's, it, it's so strange to look around. But still, I mean, the stories in politics at the moment, of course, they are better than ever because so much craziness is going on. So much uh, people people uh, fight for the power in a in an ugly way that you have never seen before. Um, so there are many stories, I'm sure. But when we set out to do Borgen, we set out to do a TV show that believed in the politicians. The background was that in Denmark at the time, people were a, a bit bored with politics, and we thought we need to make a TV series that make people engaged in politics. We want to do it by making the politicians the heroes. I mean, we have seen so many TV series also in, in the UK and so on where the journalists are, uh, are the heroes and, and, and the politicians are always the bad guys. We wanted the politicians to be the good guys in this one. Uh, even the guys we disagreed with, or uh, women we disagreed with, we wanted them to be uh, he heroes in their own right. They had visions, they believed in their politics. Maybe they didn't believe in my politics, but they believed truly in their own politics. Uh, most of them, not Laugerson who becomes the main antagonist of the series, but that's the reason he is the bad guy in that series. He doesn't believe in his heart. Uh, but, uh, but, but it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's not like that anymore. <laughs> and, and I think then came House of Cards and it came at the right time, I would say, when it came about, I felt that it was a little bit too uh, dystopic and too skeptic about politics, uh, but it turned out that they, they were actually seeing the future. <laughs> we were not, uh, w which is sad, um, because it's everything now is like House of Cards. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, just... Uh, uh I, I, I need to say one thing, not just not Go to uh, it's, it's, uh, your, it's, your, it's your show. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, the, 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 the episode you're going to see in a moment is the first episode of the third series of Follow the Money. Follow the Money is a show about financial crime, but in the third season, we completely reinvented the show. So f the first two seasons are very much about rich people in big boardrooms, in big corporations. The third season is very much about money laundry on the streets of Copenhagen. Uh, but the, the two main uh, uh, characters are both men. <laughs> uh, and as you know, I like to write female characters uh, as well. Uh, so I just want to say that if you get the chance, the next episode after that introduces the third main character, which is a female character, and probably th the, the female character I'm the most proud of having written. <laughs> uh, so I hope you catch the second season as well uh, to get the full scope of things. But we wanted to be brave I'm not going to spoil anything, but we wanted to be brave and not introduce all the main characters in the first episode because the Americans always do that. And we <laughs> thought we will save uh, one of the main characters to, for the second uh, episode and then give her like a, a big warm welcome there. And, and she gets that in the second episode, just so you know. <laughs> I, I just want to say that if you're going to see the, the, the first episode, it's the first episode that I, I tell you when well, we are... We are beginning this bottle of wine, that uh, you are treating your audience as uh, intelligent, smart people. So you're going to see a series that begins in media res. It means there's a lot of history be, be, um, uh, before that, but as you are smart people, you're gonna understand it all in five minutes because, uh, and so I, I'm, I'm really grateful to you because I, 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 was, I, was, I was just watching this episode and I thought, Okay, this is a smart, a smart guy thinking I'm a smart guy. So, uh, and sometimes TV is uh, supposed to be done for silly people. And uh, with Borgen, uh, with Follow the Money, uh, you are treating uh, we, the people that watch in the series, as uh, uh, 
uh, intelligent people, and I'm really grateful for that. And I have to say that as in the beginning of the century, the Americans or North Americans had uh, West Wing as a support of, or, or as a counterweight uh, for the reality. I think that now we can rewatch Borgen and, and regain some kind of hope in, in the politicians. So we're gonna need a lot of Borgen in the years by. So thank you for being here and thank you, thank you for your work. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.